Hi there, my name is Kelsey, and today we're going to be coding a simple memory game using Python. So this is an intermediate level project for those who are new to Python. And before beginning, you should already have some experience with Python Turtle and understand key concepts such as creating functions and variables, using operators and booleans, or creating loops, because these are going to be what we're going to build off of in this project. So by the end of the project, the game screen should have an eight by eight grid of squares, and there should be an image of some sort behind it. Each square is gonna have a number on it, and by clicking on the number, it's gonna show what number it is. Meanwhile, when you click on the next one, it'll hide the previous number and show that one. When you click on two squares with the same number in a row, then it will hide those squares and you'll see a part of the image. So the goal of the game is to uncover the entire image. So let's get started. The first thing we're gonna do is import all of the libraries that we're gonna use. So to start, let's start by importing random and turtle, which are two of the libraries that we're gonna use and import asterisk. So then the other module that we're gonna be using is from free games, import path. So that's just what we're gonna to use to address our, um, our car image that we're gonna be using later, which is what we're gonna get onto now, which is defining the main game pieces. So in this case, I'm gonna start by defining the car. So car is equal to path. In this case, I'm gonna do car.gif. Whoops, sorry, I spelled that wrong. Car.gif. So that's what my um, image is called. And then I'm gonna set up my tiles. So tiles is equal to list. And then here we need to put a range for our list. So I'm gonna do a range of 32. And then outside of here, I'm gonna do times two because this will give us our 64 squares that we need for our eight by eight grid. So next I'm gonna create the state. So I'm gonna do state is equal to mark, whoops, that needs to be a string, mark. And then mark is equal to none. And keep in mind that none is not a zero, it's not a false, it's just a null value. It's a data type of its own. So now we're just gonna create hide. So hide is equal to, and we'll make that true. And then we'll do times 64. So that will make sure that all of them can be hidden. So the next thing that we're gonna do is we're going to define our squares. So I'm gonna start by doing def square and my x and y. So this will be the squares that make up the grid. And so to start with that, I'm gonna mark what they do because I wanna remember. So draw white squares. So, okay. So here we'll go. We'll start with our up command. And then we're gonna do go to X and Y. So what this will do is that will just, um, allow us to make the turtle go to a specific place. And then we're gonna start with our down. Next, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna set the colors and begin fill. So color is black, white, and then we're going to begin fill. Whoops, I forgot an extra L there, but there we go. So now all we're gonna do is make our for loop because this will make it a lot, a lot easier to create our squares. Oh, I see, I forgot. Okay, so we have our begin fill, I forgot an underscore. So the next thing we're gonna do, as I mentioned, is create our for loop. So for count in for, whoops, sorry, in range for, 
what we're going to do is we're going to go forward 50. And then I want to go left 90. And then I'm going to end fill. So that will just make our square and we'll be good from there. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to define our index. So what this will do is it will convert our x and y coordinates into an index for the tiles. So I'm going to start by doing def index. And then we're going to need to use our x and y coordinates here. And then I'm going to start by doing return and int. And here is where we're gonna do the math that will change our um, x and y coordinates into an index. So here I'm gonna do, we need an extra set of brackets. Just let me clear that up for you. Okay. So at this point, we're gonna do x plus 200, and then outside the brackets, divided by with the double division, 50, plus, and then another set of brackets, and double brackets actually, we'll do y plus 200. Just let me clear that away so that we can see that. And then we're gonna do that divided by 50. And then the whole thing is gonna be times eight. So that will convert our X and Y coordinates into an index that we can use. So the next thing we're gonna do is define another function. I'm just gonna call that this um, X, Y count because it's gonna convert the tile count to the X and Y coordinates that we're gonna need for them. So in this case, I'm gonna do def x, y count. And then here I'm going to do return and then count. And then we're gonna use our percentage sign eight and then times 50 minus 200 and then we're going to do a comma and then count divided by eight with the double division and then we're going to do times 50 and then minus 200. So there we go those will be our x and our y coordinates. So I'm just going to comment that here so that we know exactly what's happening so that if we decide to come back to it later, we can. Merge coordinates to index. And then here we're gonna convert count to coordinates. And here I'm just going to comment that out so that we have that there. So the next thing that we're gonna do is we have to define our tap function. So what this will do is it will update the marks on our squares depending on whether they've been tapped or not. So when it's tapped or clicked on, it will show the number. And then when another square is clicked on, it will hide the number on the previous square and show the one on that one. So I'm gonna do define and tap. Here we're gonna use our X and Y. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by doing spot is equal to, whoops, I need my brackets, index, and then x and y. Okay, so now that we have that done, the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna type mark is equal to, and then the state of mark. So this will just uh, set mark to whatever mark state is. So now down here, we're gonna do our if statement. So if mark is none or mark 
is equal to, don't forget to use your double equal to, spot or tiles. And then we'll do our mark are not equal to, remember to use your exclamation mark and then equal. And then I'll do tiles and then spot in our square brackets. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do state mark and that is, whoops, equal to our spot. Okay. So now that we have that done, we're going to add our else. So else, and all we're going to do is we're going to do hide spot. Whoops, I forgot my brackets. Spot, and then equals false. And then next, just let me scroll down so that we have a little bit more room. We have hide spot is equal to false. We'll do hide mark is equal to false. And then finally, we're gonna do state of mark is equal to none. And remembering once again that none is a null value. It's not zero or it's not false. It's a data type of its own. So now we can see that we have completed our tap function, our count function, and our index function. So now we just have one more function to make, which is our draw function. So I'm going to do that down here. Just going to comment it. So we've got our draw function, whoops. So I'm gonna start by defining that. So I'm gonna do def draw, and then just our brackets because we don't need our X and Ys. And then I'm gonna start by um, setting up the turtle canvas. So we're gonna start by doing clear, which will clear anything that's already on it. Then we're gonna do go to zero, zero which will set the turtle to zero, zero coordinate wise. And then we're gonna do shape is equal to, whoops, sorry, not equal to, is car. And remember that we defined car up at the top. And then we're just gonna do stamp and that will stamp our turtle down. So the next thing we're gonna do is we are going to make our for loop. So in this case, we're going to do for count for count in range. And then for range, because we want it to do all of our tiles, we'll do 64. And then don't forget your colon. And we are going to do if hide count. And don't forget another colon because this is an if statement inside of a for loop. And then it'll do x, y is equal to x, y of count. And then other, otherwise, we're going to come down here and we're gonna do mark, whoops, I forgot an indent mark is equal to state of mark. This will just keep in mind that mark will be set to whatever its state is. So then we're going to add another if statement. So if mark is not none and hide um, mark, Then what we're gonna do is we are going to type x, y is equal to x, y mark. And then we will do our up, go to 
And in this one, we want to do x plus 2 and then y. We'll keep y just how it is. Then color black. I need to add my quotes around that because it is a string. And then we are going to write, and then we'll do tiles, mark, and then we'll do, we'll set our font. So font equals Arial. Oops, I have my comma inside the, the quotation marks. And then for size, we'll do 30 and we'll just do normal. So here we have that part done. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fix the indentation on this. So I'm just going to indent everything one more. And then now we're gonna go down and we're just gonna add two more lines of code in this loop. So we're gonna do update, which, and then we're going to do our on timer and then we'll do draw and 100. So what this will do is these two lines of code will make sure that the game is continually updating and redrawing itself to fit what is going on with the player. So then all we're gonna do now is we have our last couple commands. So I'm gonna start by shuffling the tiles. So shuffle tiles. So that will make sure they all rearrange. And then we're gonna do add shape of the car. Next, we're going to hide the turtle. We also need to set our tracer to false. So tracer, false. And then we're going to define tap or set our click to tap. So on screen, click, and then tap. And then we just have two more. We're just going to do draw, which will use our draw function, and then done. And there we have it. Let's just review our code one last time and we'll see how this goes. So now we're good to run the code. Let's run it and see what happens. So you'll see here we're gonna be using free games. And, oh, okay, so I added a dash there. So all we'll do is we'll run the code. Let's see if it loads. And then you can turn it up if you want. Here, just let me make this so that we can see the whole game. And then you'll see when you click on one, it will show a number. And when you click on a different square, and you'll see I must have gotten two of the same numbers because they have disappeared and we see a part of the image behind. So with a game like this, we can see it's fully functional. And there we go. We can see our car image is starting to take shape behind the squares. So well done, we're done the project. And if you have any issues with your code, feel free to run over once again, see what went wrong. And you can always check back to the video to see what happened. So have fun with this and good luck.